All right. Um, I decided I'm going to tie up some loose ends here, which is put this underneath it so I don't rest on the cylinders which is go in and drill my oil hole my oil feed hole here which I haven't I neglected to do so I need to take the cylinders off and that not that Allen wrench. It's this one, right? Nope, not that one. I gotta get the right Allen wrench here. <laughs> Too big. There we go. So we gotta take all the screws out, take the heads off and the cylinders off. I don't have them tight tightened, I just got them on there snug just to make sure that everything was going correctly. And we'll figure out which is the top cylinder. I should probably just cut away and get these all taken off. This is the last bolt in this cylinder. All right, I'm just going to set them over on the bench behind me on the platform. And I'm going to go around and take them all off. I'm going to cut away and go ahead and do that. There's no sense in watching that. Okay, I've got them all taken out and uh, are all the cylinders taken off and I had to figure out which one was the bottom which is has this extra hole here and which I'll have to do something with that let's see oh no no I won't either I was thinking that uh, one of the motor brackets was there but it's not it's here 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 and here so this is open because this is where, ah, uh, trying to remember what all goes, oh, the, the sump, the oil sump, so, so anyway, anywho, we're looking at this, at this right here, we're looking at this with a top cylinder, just like that. And we're looking at it this way, though, like that. Correct? Yep. Yep. You can tell it's this way. If you look right here, there's the <coughs> the hidden line. There's two sizes of hidden lines, small and then a bigger, which is corresponds to the smaller hole, mount, uh, smaller mounting holes, 632s, and then the bigger hole, and a quarter inch. So it's sitting just like that. So what I'm going to need to do is, okay, so if it's sitting like that, we're looking at it like that. So that hole goes through here on center line at 25 degrees over. So I am going to put some scribe lines on there to show exactly where it's at. Uh, 
I don't have any other way of doing that. Off, I could set it up on a plate and make a fixture for it. I could make a fixture that would hold that like that off of these holes here and then put a tooling ball out here somewhere to be able to swing in and then come over and do it or I can just go to a scribe line I think I'm going to be real careful and go to a scribe line so I need to set it up at 25 degrees first so I'm going to have to get one of the my knees out here because we're going to have to I'm going to have to bolt them down on a knee. I'm going to rub the bottom here to make sure that she's clean. I just cleaned my surface plate and I didn't want to put no more, put crud back on it right away. All right. That's how you, if you got a high stander or something that you're going to put on your surface plate, put a piece of clean paper underneath it and then slide it off. That'll wipe it all nice and clean. All right, so we want to go like that, and it's seven, 750 from this surface in, so we'll go like this, 25 degrees, so if I move this... If I move the top surface to 25 degrees, yep, so I have to move this top surface to 25 degrees like that. Let's get a couple clamps here. Almost too big for that little knee. <laughs> um, we need some medium-sized clamps, the way it looks. Over here in the toolbox. I put the new belt on my lathe, so so my lathe is all better now. All right, I only have one here. I know I have two of the two of them. Yeah, looks like we're going to have to take a large one and a medium size. I'm in front of the camera, I know. <sighs> so, let's see. Let's put a, something underneath it to raise it up. Like that. I could put a long stud in there. And put a clamp across. Maybe that would be the ticket. Do I have any long quarter inch studs? They have five sixteenths. I don't think I have anything long enough to reach through there. This is about the longest one I have that, yeah, see, that won't fit. You know, there's always something that, yeah, I could use. <laughs> I do have some quarter inch uh, ready rod that I, if I got desperate, I could use, I guess. Don't want to tighten it up tight, tight, because we got to move that to 25 degrees. So, need to get my, either my phone or my um, AccuAngle, is that what it's called? Accu Remote Angle Gauge. All right, let's put it on the surface plate. I'll actually put it on here and level it. Turn it on, zero in. Okay, now we want to go 
25 degrees, we want to be all drilling on this side. A little too tight. And then <laughs> I need uh, five hands here. Twenty-five and a half, right there. Twenty-five three. There's twenty-five. Twenty-five, right on the money, right now. So I can tighten it without. If I can tighten it without uh, moving it around. Had to move Mr. Raisinet, man. Mr. Raisinet, whatever his, their names are. And some of my father-in-law's uh, stuff that he had stashed away. and I didn't want to sell it, so I hung on to it. Peanuts and uh, Raisinet. He had a whole drawer for our small ones, Raisinets. <laughs> I mean a full drawer of the smaller ones. I don't know if they came in a cereal box or where they came from, but he had a he had uh, probably a couple hundred. <laughs> I kid you not. We had a saying when we were sorting through his stuff: if you found one, there's probably three more. <laughs> and that was kind of the sad truth, but. You know, it was something that he enjoyed picking up stuff that he thought was had a value. All right, so now we want to give this a little douse of red here of dicum. I use the red. I I have red and blue, but I use the red. It, I don't know. I like the red. It seems like it. It's not as thick as the blue. But you can get this stuff thick too. All right, so we got to go off the center line. Off the center line then. Shoot. I need to be able to tip it up. Will it stay in one in place if I just use the one clamp? Until I go over to the drill. When I drill, then I'll try it once. Let's see. It should. It should stay. Got the clamp in quite a ways, so. Twenty-five degrees. All right. So, we're going to tip it up, and then we'll have to pick up the center line so we know where the center line is at. All right. Pick this up. Feels like, oh, there's chips. See? Chips. Chips, oi. Where that chip came from. Probably out of one of the tapped holes on the knee. All right. Now, this is a good opportunity to explain my Cadillac gauge a little bit, or a Cadillac gauge. And my Cadillac gauge has steps where you can go. You can go in the downward position or the upward position, which they look like they need to be wiped down a little bit. I haven't used it in a long time. Well, I've used it now and then, but you want to keep the steps clean. 
I'll have to sit down with some alcohol and, and clean these. They got a little bit of crud on them, but it's not too bad. I, only, I use the lower, I don't hardly ever use the top. But anyway, back to the Cadillac gauge. It's got mine, some of them have just rings where you have to subtract a number if you're going from the unders, underside to the top side or vice versa. Mine has a, where I can go, if I set it at 500, I can go 500 here or 500 there. So I, I can have the needle in the upward or the downward. So we're going to pick up this bushing in here. I'm going to use this little high stand. And I'm not sure what diameter that bushing is, but we're going to find out. We're going to take We're going to take a read them, reading from the bottom of the bushing. Bushing. <laughs> I said bushing is bearing. All right, there's. And then we come over here on the high stand, and, or the Cadillac gauge, and we crank her down or up, whichever way we got to go to get on one of the steps. Okay, and we'll write that number down. Piece of paper. And a pen, a pen. A pen that writes. Or a pencil. Or something. <laughs> Okay, so now what that is doing is measuring the, what we were set on on the bottom of the, the bearing, the height from the table up to there. And that's what the Cadillac gauges do. That's all it does. It, it measures the exact distance from the surface plate from the, up to wherever the needle is at. So we're sitting at two inches and 86 and 4 tenths. All right, now we'll go over here, take the needle and push it upward, and we're gonna get the top of the, we're gonna go get the top of the bearing, maybe. Gotta do some Okay, and then we come over here, and now we're going to go on the bottom side of a, one of the steps. You probably can't see it this, in, in a way, I'm just going underneath on the bottom side now, above the two inch mark. And now we're getting two inches. 559. All right. So we write that down. We subtract uh, the bottom from the top. Okay. Um, seven. Okay, so the inside diameter of that, well, that's not right. Five, oh, 559, I got just 59. 
No wonder, no wonder it's not right. <laughs> I'm gonna, am I going to have to get a calculator out here? 10, 8, 15, 5, 472 and 6 tenths is that diameter. All right, so now we can take that, divide it in half, so it's It's two, three, six, all right, 236 and eight tenths. And now we know the distance from the table up to the bottom of that, of that bearing, and that was two inches and 86 and four tenths. So we add that to half of that, half of the bearing diameter. Okay, so center line, the center line is two inches, 323 and two tenths. So now we know where that center line is at. All right. So now we want to set a height. We want to set a, a scribe to that height. First thing we do is we set our our Cadillac gauge to that number, two inches, three hundred and twenty-three and two tenths. All right. And we got to get the height stand with a scribe. I have one set up over here, I believe. Oh, I don't anymore. I'll have to hunt up the scribe. <clears throat> the scribe is missing. Just cleaning the bottom. <clears throat> Hopefully it's in my toolbox here that, that I put it away. Ah, yes it is. I have a carbide inlaid scribe that I made that I like. So we'll take that and put that on here. indicator holder and we'll put the scribe in there and now we'll come over here and we'll get this number we want it two inches and we're we have it set already so we'll just take the indicator get up on that on that ledge and zero the indicator out carefully okay then we come then we come over here and we get on the scribe and we bring it up until she touches and bring that up to where it's zero now the scribe is set exactly on center line of that bushing all right so we take, come over here and we put our scribe line on. I'm going back and forth across it a couple times here. So we get a nice scribe line. All right. Now. We want to tip the knee over without causing too much damage here. Now 
Now we want to do the same thing here. We want to get the height, the height of the knee, which I don't remember. I thought that I put it on a on a even dimension, but I don't remember. Because <laughs> I know I had to regrind it. I think after some yeho thought that he could use it on the drill press. How come, how come it's moving around here? Not tight enough. I'm just going back and forth on, on that ledge just to make sure my indicator is repeating. All right, so there's zero. Crank it up till we get on the ledge. Four inches and three thou is what I've got. Four inches. Zero zero three, actually two two nine, but I'll count it three. All right. So that's the height of this, and we want to come up from this surface seven hundred and fifty thousands. So we add seven fifty, so we get seven fifty three. So we're gonna crank that back down to seven fifty three. Seven. 53, and get it loose here, come up here, we want it 4 inches 753, well that's what that ledge is, so we put the indicator on it. Make sure that it it's repeating. All right. So now we got. We know the indicator at zero is is that height that we want. We take our scribe. Come up here. Get close. Tighten that down. Bring it up to zero. Oops. Yep. So that's where we got to be. And then we take and scribe our line. Okay. That's where the hole's got to go. So now we can go over to the surf or over to the mill. Take our knee. Tip it up. I'm going to make sure that the angle is correct yet. So just like that. Turn this on. Twenty-four nine five. So I would say that's uh, probably close enough, huh? And we're going to clamp that. We're going to clamp this to make sure it stays while I'm drilling. And then I'm going to check it one more time. Just to make sure. Make sure this is, make sure this is zero. Oops, I hit the zero button when I put it on there. Accidentally. 25, 25, actually 25.05, <laughs> according to this, so 
It's good enough. Um, drop the Allen wrench down here on the floor. Uh, long ways down. So now we can go over to the mill. We come over here and we pick it up, pick that spot, uh, the scribe line up, and then I'll have to do a spot face and then drill because it's at that angle. At that angle, I don't want to it, it walk off. All right. So I'm going to cut away here and then I'll move the camera over there to the mill.